Hi folks, my name is Jay Emerlinson. I'm a transformation engineering lead here at Software AG and a specialist in the Aris platform. And today we're doing another in our series of videos called Help, I'm an Aris admin. How to support your first Aris project or instance. Now this video is gonna be focused on one of the things you'll need to do relatively early in your instance creation and maintenance, which is setting up a method filter for your users. Now, we're gonna be helping to understand what a method filter is, what it means to have a common language, how to set that method filter up, the different steps you're gonna to have to go through. So this might be a little bit of a walkthrough video of, of, of sorts, um, but this won't be creating something from scratch. We'll be actually modifying an existing method filter as an example of where you might start. Uh, you, you, I, I know Aris Advanced does come with some basic method filters available, and your Aris Enterprise, there are some demo filters uh, that can help you out with it. So let's first talk about what a method filter is. If you, if you took a look at one of my previous uh, video series, I go into depth a little bit more about method filters and, and their particulars, but to, at a very high level, a method filter defines the types of information that you're allowing users to see and capture. Uh, the models, the objects, the connections, the attributes, uh, and the assignments. That's at a very high level. What it really means more practically to all your designers is that it gives them guide rails upon which they can work to create the right kind of information um, right off the bat. So it, it, it does restrict the kinds of things they're allowed to do in order to help them do the right thing the first time. So you can think of it if you've had used Visio, uh, Visio template, um, that sort of thing. Although method filters more specifically control the types of information. Uh, we're gonna talk about Aris templates later, um, which is how, how information looks. But to do this method filter configuration, we're actually gonna need to start an Aris architect. Now in a previous video, I mentioned a little bit about how you can assign method filters to users and user groups. Um, you'll, you'll wanna do this after you finish your, your uh, method filter. But as a note in the previous video, I did assign the demo method filter to my example user. To get to my method filter, you'll need, you'll need a couple things. First, you'll hopefully be the system admin, but if you aren't, you'll need the configuration administration functional privilege. Um, and once again, you can allocate that to your users or your super users if you want them to help you with this. And then you'll go to Aris Architect and go to the administration menu. Once again, that's where we're spending a lot of our time in this video series and open up configuration. Now you'll see method and conventions. Um, those are two different components. Uh, we'll talk about in a, in a subsequent video, the idea of modifying your method. Right now, we're just gonna start with conventions. And conventions are gonna have a few different things, some of which we're not gonna need to necessarily start out with, things like font formats and setting those parameters. You, you'll probably wanna do that as you evolve, but there's lots of ways of getting guides and, and support through our, our manuals and, and walkthroughs and things like that. Um, so I'm not gonna cover those, those uh, pieces right now. For now, what I'm gonna do is, is focus on the word filter. Um, that filter is gonna have a series of filters that are available to us to help, once again, narrow down the things we can see and use. Now these method filters are gonna rely on your method, which once again, I will cover how to modify later on as we custom or configure um, the different um, objects and symbols and, and uh, models and connections and things like that. So they're gonna draw from that list of possibilities, um, but then we're gonna configure it down from the everything's possible, which is our entire method, down to exactly what you need. To do that, I'm actually gonna, instead of creating a new filter, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to you know, edit the filter that already exists. Don't worry, you can just right click on filter and create a new one. Um, and there's lots of ways to do that, but I'm just gonna edit down this filter uh, and talk a little bit more about what this, what this process is. So you're gonna see when I open up the, the menu for editing a method filter, there's gonna be a whole bunch of different fields or, or sort of stages we're gonna go through. Um, each of these stages is going to have, you know, these 15 stages are going to have things you, you may or may not need to do there. Some of them are not, not relevant. So for instance, this isn't relevant. Let, we're just going to be editing a filter. So we're just doing customize. As a note, you can create filters automatically from a database, which we're not going to cover today, but that's some, that, that is a possibility. And you might speak to your software AG or, or consulting service partner representative to talk a little bit more about that. And once you have a bunch of filters, you might want to choose to merge a filter. So for instance, if you have different filters for different business groups, you might want to merge them together to have one harmonized filter that would cover the whole organization. Um, we're going to skip meta models. It's not relevant for this particular thing. And now we get to the first piece of the puzzle. Which model types do I want to allow in my particular filter? Now, there's a lot of here that are possible. This is once again, all of the, of the models that come in from the method. So the sort of master list of all possible models. I'm gonna choose to just show the selected ones. This looks like a lot. This is too much for somebody uh, who might just come in for the first time. Let's make it really simple. Uh, so I know I, I need an application system type diagram. I want to have none of these. I care about 
BPMN, but I want 2.0, not 1.x. So I'm just going to, actually, I'm going to um, take away all of these because I'm using an enterprise BPMN collaboration diagram, which is one over here that's, that's a little bit better. I'm going to take out all these things, uh, business controls. That's good for risk and controls. I'm not going to do business rules right out the way. So you're essentially just narrowing down what you, what you want and what you don't want um, right away. And I'm not going to do control to X. Uh, let's keep those in. Customer touch points do seem relevant, but I'm not doing solution design. Um, and so you're just going to, you're going to filter these down to the things that you really care about. And so once you're done uh, doing these, these particular, uh, this sort of pruning of models, um, you can now start to move on to the next phase of things. So I'm, I'm just, uh, once again, pruning them down to things I care about. The next is object types. This is going to take a little bit more experience to know exactly what you're looking for. Um, the object types you're seeing here are objects that can be contained on certain models. One really handy, handy trip is you can, you trick is you can hover over an object type to see its type number and API name. That's going to come up a lot in your, your method over here. Um, when you're adding new things or you're, you know, you're, you're trying to figure out which one, which objects can sit on which models based on the default method for Eris. For now, we're just going to leave this because on your first instance, you're not really going to need to do too much to mess these around. Although you might want to look through and make sure that some, that some of the things you care about are, are covered. Like for instance, uh, if you, if you want data stores, you might want to enable that versus having that disabled. Next is we're going to choose connection types. This is another one of those things where you have to know which connection types can exist on which models. And you'll go into that in more detail. Uh, if you really get into the method configuration, which we'll once again, talk about in, in a subsequent video. Um, but once again, hovering over top of these, will give you the type number and API name, which we can refer to later on in the method. Um, and then we're going to cover creating custom symbols, but for now we're going to just be using the symbol palette that, that exists with Ares by default. And this allows you to select which symbols are uh, on which model. So I actually, I'm just going to drag this a little bit larger so it has a little bit more space to breathe and you can see what I'm going to do. So perfect example is EPC, a very common model type, um, event driven process chain. That's a top down process model, has a lot of different possible symbols on it. We do not want everyone to have all these symbols. There's too, too many of them. Um, we can constrain them. There's tons of different types of, of symbols available. I'm going to go and, and I'm actually going to, so I can filter by clicking on these, these symbols by uh, either they're alphabetical or which ones have actually been selected. Um, and I'm going to say, yeah, I don't care about business services. I don't care about business rules. I don't want attributes. I'm actually going to remove the things that don't matter to me, external persons, files. Um, I'm not going to be using internal person. I'm not going to be using uh, a IT system. I'm using application system type. Uh, so I can just go down and prune the types of symbols that I don't think I'm going to need. I'm, I'm not working in SAP context. So I don't need these things. Um, and you know, the, we're, we're going to, we're going to get down to the, the things that really matter to us. I'm not putting org units or positions. I'm using roles. Um, so just taking all the things off that I don't think are important. Um, let's say I'm not doing customer. Actually, I'll, I'll keep customer journey mapping just in case. So next, so you're going to go through each one of these and select all of the symbols that you want to be able to include on that model. The next is called assign connection types, which means you're going to select from the symbols you have allowed to include on the model which connection types you want to allow to exist between those two symbols. And you might think that's pretty simple because, you know, I connect one object to another, it creates a little line. But in Ares, it's actually not quite that. It's actually much more powerful. A uh, perfect example of that is if I go between um, the object type role and the object type function, note that I've got a bunch of different possibilities focused on like the racy convention. So maybe I don't want to have the whole racy convention here. Maybe I just want to have uh, carries out. Okay, so that's going to be, I'm going to take away all these, boom, 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 and now it's just carries out. So if you only have one connection type available between, a, between two objects on a model, it will just default to that connection type and won't prompt you with anything like, hey, do you want to choose a connection? If you have multiple types of connections available, it will prompt you with a little submenu that says, oh, I see you're connecting role to function. Which of the connection types do you mean? Uh, so it's just, it's, it's easy for you to, to be able to do. I actually am going to continue to do R A uh, C I. So it, 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 at least I have those things. 
Um, and once you've selected or deselected the ones that don't that aren't relevant to you, um, you know, once again, you can filter by connection type, by by source, by target. It's really handy. And you're going to want to go through each of the model types. So this can take you a little while, but once again, that's why we reduce the number of possibilities um, to the, the lowest common denominator. Simple enough. Um, next, we're going to talk about object assignments. So what, what, what is an assignment in errors? An assignment is when an object breaks down into a lower level model, as in I taking, taking a, like a process object, this is a, this object was a process, and I double click on it, and it opens up a process model that describes that process in more detail. Now, we, this is how we're gonna create hierarchies in Eris, and we're gonna take a look at that in a, in a couple of uh, videos from now on creating a hierarchy and navigation structure. But this is how I determine which models I'm allowed to assign an object to. So a perfect example is our most common object, which is our function object, which describes the activities or processes or, or domains, and things like that. I can choose which models I want to allow it to break down into. So let's say I'm not doing value stream mapping and I don't care about quick models. I'm probably not gonna do it into a matrix model. Um, I'm just gonna have value added chain diagrams, which is our sort of high level models you'll see later. Um, EPCs and enterprise VPN collaboration diagrams. And then these, these two are just sort of corner cases. So that, that's how I'm gonna talk about my, my object assignments um, that, so I can break down my hierarchy. I'm creating it in this filter. Same with connection assignments, although in this case, we don't have any connections that would allow you to assign uh, models to them, but there are certain connections. A perfect example is data flow connections that allow you to have things like application collaboration diagrams when one application talks to another. And now we get into the attributes field. Um, so on every model, we have a list of possible attributes. You'll, you'll note that there are a lot of them. There's a lot of attributes. If you open up the full list, there's a huge number of attributes possible. Once again, this gets modified as you modify the method. Um, so you're gonna select things you care about and don't care about. So for example is I don't care about link three, I don't care about valid until, I don't care about author, I don't care about, uh, you know, let, let's, let's do our average total time, I don't care about that. These are not things that I'm going to have number of compressed models, no. I'm not gonna go through the governance cycle here. So I'm just gonna remove these things. And that means that we have less options for people to, uh, to select from when they're looking at things. Essentially reducing the complexity, but using a starter point um, to, to make this conversation happen faster. The same thing happens with objects. So every type of object um, over here, like functions, have a list of possible attributes that they can have. And I can select and deselect those attributes as much as I need. Uh, in my case, I, I'm, I'm, I'm once again trying to make it as simple as humanly possible. So I'm never looking at anything that, that would be complicated for my user to do. Um, and then we do the same thing for connections. And then there's one thing that's really interesting here. Um, we're, we, once we're done all these attributes we've chosen to add to each of these things, we're going to select the order they appear on a model. Um, so this, so the attributes that are higher up um, are going to appear first in a list of attributes. So you can see here are the ones and I can choose, oh, I want this to be up or down or however I want it to appear. Similar with our symbol order, that's going to make, mean it make it easier, just generally easier for you to access symbols that are higher in the palette. So you're going to select the ones that are the most common for your users to use. Perfect example is functions are our most common. Um, those are the steps in our process then our events, then our, uh, we're gonna actually do flow objects first, the and or XOR rule, um, and then our process interface at the end or beginning, our role, and actually I'm gonna move application system up here. That's, that's one we're gonna access a little bit more often. And so I'm now, I'm now just setting things up so my users are better enabled and they're more easily uh, given the access to and only the access to the right information. And so once I've configured this method filter, I'm now able to, once again, assign it to my users like I, like I showed you before. This has now been modified. It's easy for me to log in and see fewer things um, that are just ready to go for my environment. Now this does take a little while. Um, generally, we recommend that, that people do this before the users get in because it's a lot harder to sort of unring that bell afterwards. If people are designing using just what, sort of whatever symbols that they feel like, it's a little harder to go back and consolidate it after the fact. So I would suggest putting one of these in place before you go um, and, and initialize all your users uh, and get them running in your system. Uh, and once again, remember that, that these apply to users and user groups. So, you, so by default, you don't, they don't start um, on your database. The other thing you can do is right click on your database and choose properties. Um, this is gonna give you a bunch of properties about your database, but one of them is uh, palette and method filter. 
So I'm going to select the default method filter for this is going to be demo. Note that some people, like for instance, you as a system user, can access multiple different method filters. Um, and this will allow, this will, this will say, if I'm given the option to select between multiple method filters, please use demo for my palette and method filter. And hit OK. And that's going to set that to be my default for this particular database. And that's creating method filters. Uh, it, it can take a little while. Um, I would also recommend you go through a, a process of methods and conventions, which is all about having conversations with your business stakeholders about what, what information looks like, what it means, um, sort of the, the idea of establishing and harmonizing a common language. But once you've got that as an admin, you can quickly set up your method filter and you're off to the races. And that is method filter creation. I'm J.M. Erlinson. Once again, thank you so much for your attention and time. I'm excited to continue to present this series. Um, and please leave feedback and comments as much as you'd like. We'd love to hear from you, um, be able to create the kind of content that you need to be an Eris admin. So thank you so much. We'll see you in the next video.